she giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe Jacksonville rapper has been delayed Noah Williams, who performs under the name Spinnabins Is charged with possession of a firearm by gang-related felons in addition to his successful music career, Williams is also affiliated with a violent street gang that police say is responsible for dozens of homicides. The extent to which this, his gang ties will be allowed at trial, that was one issue discussed at today's hearing. The judge did not issue a final ruling. The judge did, though, agree to delay the trial at least two weeks, time that Williams will have to spend behind bars. His bond was revoked last week after police say he removed his ankle monitor. Well, 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 what we do, we have it. Oh, boy, spin a bean, rattle, right bah, bah. Come here, let me talk to you. See, now they gave you that ankle monitor. You just couldn't, there you go, mm-hmm, there you go. You just couldn't, that right, could you? Child. The Temple River, though. Every time they give y'all inch, you take a mile and a quarter. Now look at you. You know you got that trial getting ready to start next week. Mm. And you done got rap temple. It's always rapable. Rapable. Y'all mess up. Mm. Let's see what this judge got to say about this Temple River. Boy, you done went all the way this time. Ain't got no trouble. You know, that's rare for you, Spinner. Yeah. You ain't hear me say that, though, yeah. Mm. Ain't him. But, you yeah. have All y'all getting old, y'all realizing this thing ain't no joke, huh? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Right, we're here to see a Florida versus Noah Williams. Uh, let's start with appearances of counsel. Mr. Noah Williams. I end our hearing today with for all pending motions uh, for benefit of counsel. What I saw is the pending motion were in this motion to buy and them turn it up, yeah. Defense first motion in limine, defense second motion in limine, defense third motion in limine, mm -hmm. and defense what fourth are you motion talking in limine. Um, I have reviewed well, it looks like the state has filed a motion to revoke bond as well. Then that scene there uh, looking all crazy. Jab the defense fourth motion mm -mm. in limine. Uh, anything we need to add? Come on, let them talk about Okay. Uh, no, the only thing I, I guess maybe we have to talk about it while I'm still here in town is the, uh, the prosecutor is just notified me she's going to motion for continuance. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about that today while I'm here, because the only, one issue we've got is we got an expert witness from Ohio who's made her travel reservations, plane, hotel, and, you know, she's got an outstanding invoice with us. So that's the only thing financially. We've got to try to figure out if I can work with, and I'm willing to work with the prosecutor, but that's an issue for us. And your Honor, I do have a written motion. I was going to address that at the end, but if your Honor would prefer to address Now they just asked you if you had something to say, Apple. You said no. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's now you want to ask the bone after he getting asked, but come back to you. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Come back to you, help. <laughs> That's what he said. You just want to see what that man was going to say for All right, Mr. Eckhart, have you received a copy of the state's measure for continuance? I just got it, Your Honor. Mm hmm. She knows what you're doing. She gave it to you late for a reason. Mm hmm. I mean, what did you read in that post, Spinner? You know what you done done? Let go, I tell you. Now, why would you take that angle mountain at all? Mm-hmm. Labor Day been had you doing some extra labor. And it is. Come on in. We ain't got all day. Anywho, let's rock, let's roll.
I can't believe the Negro took the Ang Commander dog. Hmm. What's the whole All right, so, um, defense, excuse me, state has suggested October 3rd or October 24th. Um, no, they ain't trying to change that. Benefit, oh, uh, boy. What are we talking about? Uh, hear from the defense on the motion to continue. Yeah, Your Honor, I, I just want to preference this with, you know, as far as continuances and working with opposing counsel, whether I'm on prosecution side, defense side, never had a problem with it, never will have a problem with it. The only in this case is we went ahead and retained an expert in Ohio. She's already in. I don't know if there's an opportunity for us to recapture um, these fees or she'll move these fees forward. Um, her fees are $4,579.97, cents. She's booked her, she's booked her um, airfare and she's booked her hotel. Um, so that's something I've had an opportunity to talk to her about. Um, my co-counsel, uh, David Bigney, I know that him and I have, you know, coordinated for the trial to be on the 19th and it's been the 19th for a while now. The case has been filed, I think back in June of last year. So that's the issue I have is the financial hit that uh, we would have to take. And so if, but, but again, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to her about that. If, if that's something that she's willing to work with us on, um, in, in as far as the flight and the air, the flight and the hotels, then, and that might not be a problem going the third, but I've got to, I've got to try to get all over. And figure okay. That out. Um, what, what is the subject matter of her expertise? She is the DNA expert. Um, and that's, you know, and I'm sure um, the prosecution can add to this, but this case really comes down to trace DNA. Right. Um, 12% of his DNA was on a handgun. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't, I can't speak to her billings. The hotel should have most likely could be canceled. Airfare, probably going to be some kind of penalty there. Um, so then you need to be changing no code day. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Again, I'm, I'm obviously willing to work with, with the prosecution on this. It's just something that I, I haven't had an opportunity to, to, to talk to the you know, DNA expert about. I understand. Mm, um, Twibs and Jai, that's the all I'm buzzing. The reasons provided by the state for the motion to continue seem reasonably well placed. Um, mm. They always what want to get them some extra time. When do you think you might be able to find, putting aside cost issues, your expert's availability for that week? Uh, I can try to contact her as soon as the hearing's over. I can get on the phone with her. I drove up from Orlando and said, I emailed her yesterday. She emailed her invoice, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before. If I, um, I'd like to settle as many of these issues as we possibly can. Yeah. If I give you about five minutes, do you? You want to take a shot at giving her a call to see if she's available? Yeah, I can, I can try to reach out to her herself. I'd appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Well. And John, we got October 3rd. October 3rd. Uh, and just so we <laughs> have to come back for this. So the third, um, and the way we envisioned it the last time would be um, getting the jury in the morning, doing openings and uh, openings in the afternoon, and then going from there. Um, so probably I, I can work around that. I mean, it's um, we can also open on Tuesday. Okay, I can figure during the afternoon we can open on Tuesday. I, I just was trying to get her so that she's you know available for te the testimony because she was going to come in on Monday night, um, be available Tuesday in case the state's uh, evidence was only a day. She could possibly test testify in the afternoon and also be available the next day, which is a Wednesday. Yeah, so kind of like so it's. Um, Keep in mind, this is a little bit of guesswork. I'm just looking at the trials I have set for the third. Uh, you ain't got nothing. Ain't nothing going, going on in Duval. Trying, trying to try that week. Okay. So, um, 
emergency order availability was that week. If we needed to take a day break between presentation of the state's case and presentation of the defense case, we can do that too. Okay, I'll give her a call. Okay. Mm. Anywho. This is him going on September 8th. Well, why they do that? Let's find out about this new breaking news with Spinner Bands. Uh, assistant said that he's available um, the third and the fourth, but he is Jewish, and I guess the fifth is Yom Kippur. I don't know if the courts are closed here, but they're, they're, they're not. They're closed in Orlando. And, uh, so that's where we're at. Okay. Um, well, I would certainly, um, to the extent your co-counsel would, would want the court to, I can certainly accommodate his uh, religious holiday as well. Okay. Um, all right, I'm, I'm gonna grant the motion to continue. I'm gonna reset the case for trial on October, jury selection on October 3rd. Final pre-trial will be September 28th. Okay. Judge, I just point out I may not have an expert witness for the DNA. In this case, it's really a DNA case. That's that's the only issue I can. If that turns out to be a problem, Mr. Ecker, bring it okay. bring it to my attention, and we will do everything we possibly can to accommodate it, um, including if we need to continue the case again. Will I'm certainly sensitive to the fact that there's uh, bond issues we're dealing with as as well. Um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get it on the third. I'm hoping that your expert doesn't have a conflict. Yeah, I'm hoping neither. And final for Charles the 28th, Your Honor? Yep, September 28th. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You look like you might get on this here. I'll get all the ones then. Then you better sit your be mm -mm -mm -mm. sit your behind down so that. Y'all getting too old still be doing all the time, Poodle. A lot chat now. A lot chat now. Okay, what we waiting on? Let's get this ball here started. Yeah, baby, we bet him. So that would bring us to the defendant's motion to bifurcate the gang enhancement. Your Honor, as it relates to the motion in Lemony 4 and motion to bifurcate, the state will be calling a witness and introducing evidence. Okay. Um, well, it's the defendant's motion, so I think for procedural purposes, we need to start with the defense. And right. Then we'll get there. Right. <clears throat> Always hopping your wood up trying to get into something. You know. He was no, no, but he like to start off, I guess, the whole analysis and in, in this case with, with all these motions and that this is not a complex case. I think I mentioned that in one or two of these motions as a felon in possession case. And, and one of the things that I think is important for the court to know is the strength of the government's evidence, which I went through a discovery several times when we were ready to go to trial next week. It's DNA evidence. There's nobody, there's no eyewitnesses, there's no admissions. And so mm. it's a, a really uh, difficult case for, 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 don't say it, it's weak, nigga. It's weak. The danger that really lies beneath this, this, this gang evidence and later on this video evidence is now what you've got is you have this huge bucket of information that the government is trying to, to arguably taint the jury with. And I think the last thing anybody wants in this courtroom is for anybody, whether it's him or anybody else, who's found guilty, not on the evidence, but on some improper purpose. And that's really the, that's really the, the, the whole driving force behind my uh, motion to bifurcate. And, and I've read the cases, and, and one of the things that 
is probably one of the more compelling cases is, is the Hayes case. I mean, the Hayes case, you know, in this court, in this courthouse, but that's a murder case. You know, if we, if we had a murder case, if this was a crime of violence, if Mr. Williams was charged with carjacking or armed robbery, right, I could see it. And no question, let the gang evidence in, but it's a simple possession case. And it's not even really a possession case. I mean, the handgun undisputedly is, is found. Uh, assistant said that he's available, um, the third and the fourth, but he is Jewish. And I guess the fifth is Yom Kippur. I don't know if the courts are closed here, but they're, they're not, they're closed in Orlando. And, uh, so that's where we're at. Okay. Um, well, I would certainly, um, to the extent your co-counsel would, would want the court to, I can certainly accommodate his, uh, religious holiday as well. Okay. Um, all right. I'm, I'm going to grant the motion to continue. I'm going to reset the case for trial on October, jury selection on October 3rd. Final pre-trial will be September 28th. Judge, I just point out, I may not have an expert witness for the DNA. In this case, it's really a DNA case. That's, that's the only issue I can... If that turns out to be a problem, Mr. Ecker, bring it, bring it to my attention, and we will do everything we possibly can to accommodate it, um, including if we need to continue the case again. Will, I'm certainly sensitive to the fact that there's uh, bond issues we're dealing with as, as well. Um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get it on the third. I'm hoping that your expert doesn't have a conflict. Um, yeah, I'm hoping neither. And final for Charles the 28th, Your Honor? Yep, September 28th. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You look like you might get on this here. I'll get all the ones then. Then you better sit your be mm 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 sit your behind down so uh, Y'all getting too old to still be doing all the time foolery. A lot chat la a lot chat la Okay, where we been room? Let's get this bone here started. Addresses the motion to continue. <laughs> Why don't we work our way from the order of filing through the pending motions? Yeah, baby, we bet them. bring us to the defendant's motion to bifurcate the gang enhancement. Your Honor, as it relates to the motion in Lemony 4 and motion to bifurcate, the state will be calling a witness and introducing evidence. Okay. Um, well, it's the defendant's motion, so I think for procedural purposes, we need to start with the defense. Right. Then we'll get there. Right. <clears throat> Always hopping your wood up trying to get into something. You know. He won, Your Honor, but I just he like to start off, I guess, the whole analysis and in, in this case with, with all these motions and that this is not a complex case. I think I mentioned that in one or two of these motions. It's a felon in possession case. And, and one of the things that I think is important for the court to know is the strength of the government's evidence, which I've been through discovery several times when we're ready to go to trial next week. It's DNA evidence. There's nobody, there's no eyewitnesses. There's no admissions. And so mm. it's a, a really uh, difficult case for... for, for Don't say it. It's weak, nigga. It's weak. The danger that really lies beneath this, this, this gang evidence and later on this video evidence is now what you've got is you have this huge bucket of information that the government is trying to, to arguably taint the jury with. And I think the last thing anybody wants in this courtroom is for anybody, whether it's him or anybody else, be found guilty, not on the evidence, but on some improper purpose. And that's really, that's really the, the, the whole driving force behind my uh, motion to bifurcate. And, and I've read the cases, and, and one of the things that 
is probably one of the more compelling cases is, is the Hayes case. I mean, the Hayes case, you know, in this court, in this courthouse, but that's a murder case. You know, if we, if we had a murder case, if this was a crime of violence, if Mr. Williams was charged with a carjacking or armed robbery, right, I could see it. it no question, let the gang evidence in. But it's a simple possession case, and it's not even really a possession case. I mean, the handgun, undisputedly, is, is found. So basically, a uh, side of town or a specific neighborhood that they rep, they don't have a set hierarchy, per se, like the Bloods do, um, but they do commit crimes together. Um, what about rules? Do they have a specific set of rules? No. During the course of your investigation, did you document and review documentation of members of 1200 under Florida Statute 874 criteria? Yes. Now, among that criteria for consideration, did hand signs, style of dress, and tattoos become a consistent feature for members? Yes. Let's first talk about hand signs. Are there any hand signs that are specific to 1200? Try to be no. swaying, they be really and knowing what time it is. Look at them. the hand oh, sign here. Try. Is there a, a hand sign that they Just like y'all in the valley. It ain't that deep. Yes. Can you demonstrate to, that to the court as well? If the right, deceased uh, gang member or associate of the rival gang, they'll, like one of them is 35, they'll do 35 like this or do it down or they'll hold it up while they're smoking weed or do stuff like that. Okay. Now, what about style of dress? Is there a style of dress that 1200 um, uses? Yes, they usually partake in like um, chains that, chains and t shirts that um, respect like fallen members and associates of the gang. Chad, that ain't no dirt. Blocking. You don't got that pulling from that? Yes. How? By visually looking at them on their body. What is the most common type of tattoo that you see? Uh, ones that show respect to fallen members. Okay, I got that guy really named Noah Williams. Yes. How did you become uh, familiar with Noah Williams? Uh, through my investigation in 1200. Do you see him here in court today? I do. And can you just identify where he's seated? He's seated next to his attorney at the table wearing a green shirt. Okay. Your Honor, may the record reflect that he's positively identified the defendant? Yes. Is Noah Williams documented as a criminal gang member of Out East? Yes. When was he first documented? He was originally documented in 2016, and then I redocumented him in 2021. Why did you redocument him in 2021? Because he's a bust. So for Florida State statute, after five years, if you don't no longer meet the criteria, you're purged and removed from the system as a gang unit or gang member. So right. So once you're documented, you're not documented for life. Right. Have you purged individuals? Yes. From out east? Yes. In 2021, what criteria did Noah Williams um, meet? He, um, he associated with one or more known criminal gang members. Um, you see him flashing the hand sign that's used by the criminal gang. And he adopts a style of dress and tattoos that are identified by the criminal gang. And I've spoken to many sources that have identified him. So I guess all the mamas that got their cheering picture on their shirt and tattoos of their cheering on me and the gang. Being a rapper. Yes. Child, what type I can. Of rap does he do? We call it culture. And you've already explained this mm, 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 in a different period of what the real rap is, correct? Yes. Okay. Detective, what date was this defendant stopped? Um, in a traffic stop? Uh, March 4th, 2021. On that date, was there an event occurring? Yes, there's a, it was a uh, viewing that night for Darian Sulf. Who is Darian Sulf? He's a documented member of 1200. Was he, you, you mentioned it was a viewing. Um, how did he die? He was murdered in Orlando. Was he with anyone when he was murdered? Yes, he was with his girlfriend and an individual named Brandon Bevel, who was an associate of 1200. And was that on February 20th of 2021? Yes. Did he go by any nicknames? Michi. Did you know through your investigation him to have a relationship with the defendant? Yes, he uh, claimed to be the CEO of 18 Records, and 18 Records is one of the entertainment groups that 1200 uses. Was there a heavy police presence at this viewing? For what y'all yes, describing this um, business is... The gang unit was there. Um, y'all trying to make the game into the same type of thing that's over in California. CBR, well, you just said it ain't the same thing. Why was there this heavy police presence? Because there was a previous incident at a funeral for uh, Malik Beals. Who is Malik Beals? He's a documented associate of uh, 1200 who was murdered. 
And does Malik Beals have any nicknames? He goes by Leaky. What date was he murdered? It was um, September 2nd of 2020. Um, when he was murdered, was he in the car with anyone? Yes, he was with um, Noah Williams and Marquez Johnson. Who's Marquez Johnson? He's another t- uh, documented 1200 gang member. He goes by Little Quez. Now, was there a funeral that followed the murder of Malik Beals? Why do you need to do that, The heavy police presence at Darien Falls viewing because of something that happened at Malik Beals. Um, you mentioned Six Block. Who's that? It's a gang that occupies the north side of the town. And has there been an ongoing dispute between 1200 and Six Block? Yes. For about how long? 10 years. 10 years? You don't even know how you know. Six Block and its members. I have. Um, were any arrests made following that shootout at Malik Beal's funeral? There was. Who was arrested? Um, Alex and Alan Bass and uh, Keon Newkirk. Who are Alex and Alan Bass? They're documented members of Six Block. And you mentioned Keon Newkirk. Who is that? He's another documented member of Six Block. He goes by um, the nickname Dolo. Now, to your knowledge, was Noah Williams present during that incident? No, ma'am. Is this incident later referenced in a music video that this defendant is a rapper in? Yes. Um, who else is in that song? Uh, Desan Williams, his uh, nickname is Greenlight, and he's also a 1200 gang member. Was he present at Malik Beal's funeral? Yes. What is the name of that song? It's uh, Dead N Words. Um, is there a music video that accompanies that song? Yes. Girl, and right, you know better than you say that the long uh, for me. Are you familiar with its lyrics? Yes. Your Honor, um, may I approach the witness? You may. And I'm showing him State's Exhibit A, which I have already talked to the defense counsel about, so he's aware what is on this disc. Uh, Detective, have you seen this disc before? Yes. And how do you recognize this disc? Oh, my signature's on it. Okay, what does this disc contain? Oh, uh, the music videos. Are there three music videos? Yes. That we'll be referencing today? Yes. And are they uh, s- substantially in the same condition as they were on YouTube when you picked up? Yes. Turn at this time to see who State A is on it. Any objections from the I just don't know how you can authenticate something off of YouTube. You have to the publisher. I could have done it. But self authenticate it's on YouTube. Hey. He's not authenticating the music video. He's saying that these are the videos that are holding you. But you can't. I'm just sorry, you're going to put it in front of a jury or. Well, I mean, it's, we're not, it's not in front of a jury. When, I, when I'm taking it into evidence, I'm not okay. taking it into evidence for purposes of this particular motion in limine. Um, take back all it is. Did you pull the videos from YouTube? They're yes. Down, they're downloaded from YouTube, okay. yes, sir. Um, did you ever watch them on YouTube? Yes, sir. All right. Is that is the videos you watched on YouTube what's on the disc? Yes, sir. All right. Taking it into evidence for the limited purpose of this hearing. Okay. Right, you have permission to publish the right? Yes. Is that is there anything on your screen at this time? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Oh, there it goes. Second. Another name that 1200 uses. Well, don't be in there bopping your head to your phone. Who is that? It's Noah Williams. All right, and what does the side of his shirt say? Cuckoo as well. Yes. What is that on the shirt? It's a 
It's uh, 187 Boys, which used to be the entertainment group that they used before they used their uh, 18 records. And ATR is what is on the chain now? Yes. Who is that? It's Case Spaz. And we're at 13 seconds for the record. What is he doing with his hand? He's doing the 3 5, 35. For, um, yeah, 30. We were referencing his PD as well, and uh, he was murdered. Um, he was a six block associate that was murdered. <laughs> side of town and it's a uh, road that they know the occupied traps or, or drug houses on. Who is they? Uh, 1200 block. Alright, he mentioned pop. What is in the pop? It's in terms of opposition, survival gang. And slide. What does it mean, don't slide? It means they don't come shoot the block up. Alright, we also heard him say, they say Tiki ate shot. What is that about? That's a reference to Tiki Williams, who is a um, murdered six block associate. We also heard PD asked took 35, they were all case shots. What is that a reference to? It's a reference to 35 or PD's homicide. Uh, detective paused at 33 seconds. Who is that individual? That's um, Xavier Mitchell. He goes by Zay. He's another documented member of 1200. And was he also pregnant in another fatal when Willie Fields was murdered? Yes, he was. Boy, stop bopping me on zone. referring to when he was involved in a, a shooting and he got hit in the leg as a victim. Six block, and he's referenced as the cracker or cracker. And put that flame in his mouth. What is flame? It's a it's a gun or a gunshot. Um, he's speaking of an incident where um, Lorena Spain was shot in the mouth. Hey, they ain't out. Yes. And is there a music video that accompanies that song? The 
is not. Is it audio? Or live streams? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What? Uh, detective, that audio is accompanied by a album cover, right? Yes. Yes. And that's common to you all. It is. Um, we see Noah Williams on there? Yes. And next to him, who is that? It's Reginald Williams. And Detective Williams. What really think they're doing something on this thing? Explaining. They're really not getting it good like they're supposed to. But they think they know a little something, so. This nigga is straight bopping to his soul. I can't. Her 300 for my Glock, or I paid 300 for my Glock. Okay. Um, the kid of Larry pointing at it. Another lyric uh, that refers to a female, what is that? It's uh, referencing a female being 18 and they give her $300 to go buy ammunition. Okay. And that ammunition that's mentioned, um, you refer to 40 bullets, seven, six, two, and nine? Yes. The final video I want to talk to you about is a song called Real Time. Are you familiar with that song? Yes. And who is that song by? No, Williams. Uh, are you also familiar with the music video? I am. All right, so at the beginning of this video, there is what is labeled as a stranger warning. Yes, yes. Um, and it says that it might cause nightmares. Is that accurate? Yes. Who does it say might cause nightmares especially? The ops. And that's the opposition? Yes. Not the opposition. They better use the right words. <laughs> mm -hmm. The opposition. <laughs> they don't even sound right. In a darn game war. They just made me sound so just dramatic. Stop! Is a reference into Marcus Jackson. He's a murdered, uh, he got murdered and he was an associate of Six Block as well. Okay, everybody in the street know who somebody got killed. That ain't nothing big, nothing new. They live in the neighborhood. Oh, we heard so and so got killed. What for the news to report? Uh, Gerard Bell. He went by Rod K. He was another murdered um, associate of Six Block. Uh, he says specifically. I told y'all Rod K was dead before. Stop rolling in that goddamn seat, boy. That's what happened to Rod K. Yes, You give me three a lot of them messing up, not know what they're talking about, don't you?
Yes. Yes. Alright, so we just heard him saying we'd be spinning shit so all those traps be closed in the north. Um, what are those traps? It's a house where usually narcotics are being sold out of. What is the relevance of closed trap in the north? Well, he's saying that we've been spinning so the, the traps are closed in the north, so they're saying they're spinning the block. They're going out there to go shoot somebody or do a shooting on the north side, and that's why the traps are closed. Sure. Six block. Stop saying your darn song, clown. Better not say it either. I want that N word. Yes, it's Charles. Yeah. Um, he's a uh, documented gang member for Six Block. He goes by Fulio. And is he known to be a rival uh, of ours? Yes. <laughs> It's Xavier Mitchell. And that is an individual that was with that memory. In other words, yes. he's telling you stop all that goddamn rocking and spinning and enjoying your damn music. You know the white folks think you crazy when you do that kind of stuff. They swear they know something. Oh my god, they're a terror jar. Now why they trying to do the crap out of Senator, what was the title of the song we were just watching? Drill time, Your Honor. Um, Detective Deagle, I just have a couple additional questions on those music videos. Um, the date that the music video, Dead Edwards, was published to YouTube, not filmed, but published to YouTube, was October 9th. Well, stop trying to please the case over there. That man yes. know what he's doing. Let him talk to white people talking. You sit back and do and your nigga thing. The date that... Um, my block was published again. Are you so happy you getting YouTube. stuff wrong? Um, YouTube was November 28th of 2020. Yes. And Drill Time was published to YouTube February 28th, 2021. Yes. Um, now, in this case, there was DNA obtained for the defendant. Yes. And it was sent off to be compared to the firearm. Yes. After that was uh, the defendant ultimately arrested. He was. When he was arrested, was he wearing something unique to the game 1200? Yes. All right. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Sure. And I'm showing he has the E. Do you recognize this title? Yeah, it said image was on the back of the hoodie. Okay. Um, and you personally viewed the hoodie? Yes. And you personally collected the hoodie? Yes. And this was substantially similar to what you saw in person? Yes. At this time, the state was under a state exhibit C is evidence as C. You say no objection. All right. We're received into evidence. Thank you. Purposes of the hearing. Permission to publish? Yes. The second item pulled out here for officer three. Three, two, one, three, Yes. All right. Can you just explain to the judge what we're looking at? So the the big thing is it's a tornado. Um, another moniker that Mr. Williams goes by is the tornado kid um, for rapping. But inside the tornado, you see an eight ball, which is a reference to uh, Trey D. His name was Lawrence Davis, and he was a um, affiliate of Six Block, and uh, he was murdered. Um, and the other one is 35, who is um, Antoine Williams. He goes by 35 or PD. He was also murdered. And then Mookie right there is um, an individual named Marcus Jackson who was also murdered as well. And then at the very bottom, it has a tombstone with dead ops um, spelled out on it. All right. As a part of your investigation, did you find anything that you could identify as being a 
Do you also monitor social media? Yes. Is there a platform that you primarily look at? Yeah, Instagram. Now, prior to the traffic stop on March 4th of 2020, did you observe a social media video that had this defendant um, and other documented gang members in it? Yes. Whose Instagram account was that posted to? Uh, the song Williams, Greenlight. Okay. Um, what did you observe on Greenlight's Instagram? A live video. Can you explain to the court what a live video is? A live video on Instagram is basically a um, feature of the story um, method, I guess, that uh, captures um, what they're doing in real time. Now, during that live video, do you see individuals of the rival gang Six Block actually joining to watch and comment? Yes. And are you familiar with the six block screenings through your investigation into 1200? Yes. It's your job to stay up on the rival gangs as well, right? Yes. Why would an opposing gang join and comment on someone's live? Uh, it's usually they'll join them live to see if they can see where they're at, see if they can get a location on them, and then they'll comment on them to just trash talk on them. Is this something you often see um, when you're viewing social media? Yes. Yeah, first, the witness. You may. Detective, I'm showing you what has been marked as the exhibit B. You recognize that? Yes. And what do you recognize this disc to be? The uh, live video. All right. And did you, you viewed it live, correct? Yes. Um, and it was screen recorded? Yes. And was that screen recorded then transferred to this disc? Yes. Is it in substantially the same condition as when you viewed it online? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I would have received exhibit B as evidence at page three. No objection. All right. We'll receive it as evidence for the hearing. Permission to public, Your Honor? Yes. No. All right, detective. Um, just for the benefit of the court, is this what a live video looks like? Yes. At the top here, I've just circled it. What is that? That's the um, account that the live video is being on, play, uh, played on. All right, and what is that for you? Green light. Okay, do we actually see green light in this shot? Yes. That's the only individual on the video right now, right? Correct. Oh, I'm trying to do a couple girls and shit, and then they can lie. Yeah. He's like, 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 he's like,
Um, he's basically telling Greenlight, I know where you're at. And Gary D is the client you do? Yeah. Nah, he was tweaking that nigga. Talk to me. Oh, hey, I'm on something, something, TK. Hey, you don't know shit, fuck nigga. Oh, I'm on something, something, TK. Hey, you don't know shit, fuck nigga. Passing at 319. Did Desan Williams just respond verbally to what the three of you have asked him to say? Yes. I need to bite that dog. I don't like to sit behind my dog. And then he's ripping on the money. I have to sit holding on his gun and shit. your ass on live. I'm behind my dog. I'm standing live with his. <laughs> Where they coming from? That one ain't gonna help. Whoa, whoa. He's talking about I'm like, oh, shh. Ain't gonna lie. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? They don't understand looking all masculine shit. Yeah, they don't even see me though. They like I'm just like a black bird of gold, mommy. Yeah. That's how that shit do. I like that though. You know what that means though. You know I'm back up on my feet. I got it. Let me find something. 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 Let me find and do two, you better get low. Both of us coming through. And this sound like you want to go to well. This is the only thing I'm going to show you. Pausing at 408. Detective, can you tell what that outline looks like? Looks like an extended drum magazine for a pistol. Looks like a souvenir or what? That's the only thing I'm going to show you. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's the two laughing emojis. Detective, uh, in the entirety of that social media video, do you hear or see any other individuals that you back in? Yes. Um, Noah Williams and Shaheen Murphy. Um, we've already talked about Noah Williams, the defendant, but who is Shaheen Murphy? He's a documented member of 1200 as well. Um, was he actually in the car with Noah Williams? when he was stopped. Yes. Leaving Jerry and Salt's viewing. Yes. And to be clear, that was later in the day after this video. Yes. Yeah, I have one moment, Your Honor. You may. I have no further questions for this witness at this time. Right, any cross examination, Mr. Rayford? Super quick. You've talked a lot about things that you know about gang members, correct? Yes, sir. I'm sure you've got reports about all of this stuff, right? You don't have it memorized. Uh, it's reports and interviews I mean, with other gang members. I spend 15, 20 minutes. I can't, I can't keep track of how many shootings you've talked about, how many acronyms, and how many. So you've got some reports on that stuff that I could look at, correct? There's, there's reports of shootings. Yes. Okay. I just, Your Honor, I, I don't want to sidetrack this, but I'm sure. going to need those reports. I've not seen any of this stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and then in this last video, did you see this gentleman holding what you just said with an extended clip and a gun? No, sir. Okay. And then in any of these videos that we saw before, um, and I guess the prosecutor, you, you, there's no transcripts, correct? You have transcripts of these videos? Like uh, the lyrics transcript? Yeah. No, uh, no not, not physically, no. So how do, how, do you, how do you understand what's being said? By listening to it. Do you listen to it the first time you can understand? Uh, usually, yes. You, all these, these videos you watched, you, the first time you knew, you knew, you knew what was being said in those lyrics? Yes, sir. I mean, I've listened to a lot of the videos, and um, I can pick up on when they're talking about rival gang members. Yes. And in any of these videos, we talked about this 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 funeral that was, I guess, on the fourth. Um, that was the fourth of 2021, and uh, it's safe to say you've been following his his, his videos on social media, correct? Yes, sir. And he's put out a lot of videos, hasn't he? Yes, sir. Any of those videos talk about the funeral that he attended that night? I don't recall. And then before that, were there, were there any, um, I guess within your intelligence community, was there any indication that this gentleman was going to be carrying a gun to the funeral? Um, can you repeat that again, sir? Sure. Did you have any Did you have any specific information that he was going to be carrying oh. a, a gun, let alone the Glock that's been charged in this case, to the funeral that night? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Can you read it? Right? Okay. All right. Let me step down. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Any other evidence? Uh, no, Your Honor, no other evidence, just argument. Okay. Um, heard argument from the defense, I'll hear argument from the state. 
And Your Honor, I do have a PowerPoint. We just digested a lot of information. So I'm going to pull that up just to kind of keep our timeline on track. I just have a moment to do that. She went through all that. They none of that got had him in nothing. The state has provided this court with a lot of case law. And what Your Honor will notice is that there's not a lot of case law here in the state of Florida at this time regarding this issue. Right. So we can't be going on what's going on in California because California is continually being litigated here, specifically in this courthouse. One of the opinions that Your Honor does have that was referenced by the defense is the state of Florida versus Henry Hayes case. And that citation, it's number 1D183876. It's a 2016 case that was argued in front of Judge Whittington. And it involves the gang enhancement and related evidence being used to show a timeline of events and motivation behind the charge crime. Now, something that Mr. Eckhart pointed out, rightfully so, is this is a murder case. And what you'll hear is a lot of the cases where this has been litigated are murder cases. But it is worth noting that 874.04 allows for this enhancement to be applied to all crimes, from a life felony all the way down to a second degree murder. So whether or not the case law specifically addresses a second degree misdemeanor, a first degree felony, a second degree felony is neither here nor there. The gang enhancement is there to be applied to any crime that the state of Florida charges, so long as the facts support it. Also, in this jurisdiction, another case that was argued before Judge Carbula is state of Florida versus Tyler Jackson, 19CF008869. That case was argued and tried in front of Judge Carbula this year. In that case, the defendant was charged with PSDS based on a music video. And evidence related to the gang enhancement was used to show the defendant's motivation for possessing a real firearm and not a prop gun. Also, in this jurisdiction, state of Florida versus Quinte Hudson, 2016CF004694. It's been argued and tried in front of Judge Daniel. Again, this is a murder case. It had the gang enhancement. There are companion cases that go along with Quinte Hudson that are still pending. State of Florida versus Hercules Bowers, 2017CF00695. And state of Florida versus Anthony Gregory, 2017CF007857. Again, in those cases, the gang evidence was allowed to be introduced. And it's not for the sole reason to show that the gang enhancement can be applied, but also to show motivation for the crime. That is what the state of Florida is seeking to do in this case. I have supplied the court with People v. Hernandez, 33California 4th, 1040, 2004 case. This case discusses that this is at the discretion of the court. This is something that the trial court can decide to bifurcate or not bifurcate. And bifurcation is not necessarily warranted where the evidence is relevant to the charge of offense. Evidence of the defendant's gang affiliation, including evidence of gang territory, membership, signs, symbols, beliefs, and practices, criminal enterprises, rivalries, and the like can help prove identity, motive, modus operandi, specific intent, means of applying force or fear, or other issues pertinent to guilt of the charged crime. To the extent that the evidence supporting the gang enhancement would be admissible at a trial of guilt, any inference of prejudice would be dispelled and bifurcation would not be necessary. I point this out because there was some talk about this being Williams' rule. The difference between the gang enhancement evidence and Williams' rule evidence is Williams' rule evidence is not to be made a feature of the trial. What is happening with gang-related evidence is it's showing the motivation. Why is the state of Florida saying that this defendant had that gun, that he's the one that was in possession of that gun, versus the legal lawful owner who is Antonisha Bryant? That is why the state is arguing for this evidence. A defendant seeking severance must clearly establish that there is a substantial danger of prejudice requiring the charges be separately tried. 
The Hernandez court discusses the difference between bifurcation of a prior conviction and bifurcation of the gang enhancement. The court notes that prior conviction relates to the defendant's status and may have no connection to the crime, whereas the gang enhancement has to relate specifically to the material issue of that crime that's being charged, which makes it inextricably intertwined. So the state has provided a couple of other cases. There's not a lot of case law on this issue, so some of these were supplied just for the court to read. They're not binding on the court. Some of them are not even persuasive. In California, they do not publish all of their opinions. One of those cases is People v. Ezell, E-Z-E-L-L, 2017 Westlaw 414757. This case, again, is provided for commentary only. It is not persuasive to this court. But it's interesting because it uses the case law that is published in California, like Hernandez, in its justification for allowing the gang enhancement. It is not a case that has been overturned. In that case, the defendant was charged with simply possessing a firearm, which is exactly what we have here. And much like Mr. Eckhart's argument, the defense in that argument said that this was a fairly simple case. It is a fairly simple case. But in Ezell, the prosecution argued against bifurcation, pointing out that the gang enhancement evidence, which in that case was simply wearing gang attire, being with other gang members, and being in gang territory was relevant and probative to the substantive charge. The trial court in that case denied the request for bifurcation. What was the charge in that case? Possession of a firearm. Which case is that? Ezell. People v. Ezell. E-Z-E-L-L. And again, this is not provided to the court as anything other than commentary. It is an unpublished opinion from California. But notably, it references Hernandez as well as Franklin. It goes on to say that gang evidence is relevant and admissible when the very reason for the underlying crime, that is the motive, is gang related. In Ezell, the prosecutor pointed to the gang evidence provided for several reasons why the appellant would have possessed the gun, which is allegiance to the gang, intimidating the community, and giving appellant's gang member companions access to the weapon. The evidence of gang attire, being with gang members, and in gang territory helped explain why he would have been carrying a gun. So what does the court have before it that is much like what we see in Ezell? Again, Your Honor heard a lot of information today, so we have this timeline. So what you heard is that this defendant was with another information with other documented gang members and associates on September 2nd of 2020. In that car, Malik Beals was murdered in a shooting. The defendant was also in that car. Following that event, on September 15th of 2020, a funeral was held for Malik Beals. At that funeral, Hassan Williams, Marquez Johnson, and Xavier Mitchell, who you all heard about and saw in videos, were all together, and they were targeted by members of the rival gang. Three rival gang members were arrested, Alex and Alan Bass and Keon Newkirk, who goes by Dolo, which becomes relevant in the next slide. So we saw a music video for Dead End Words, which features this defendant as well as Hassan Williams, who goes by Green Light. The purpose of this music video is twofold. The first is they're clearly flashing several symbols. I don't mean to cut you off. We've got 15 minutes left, and we're not even through the first motion. So I guess I do mean to cut you off. The issue for this motion is we're just dealing, are we bifurcating? Yes, sir. We're not dealing with what evidence is coming in or what purpose is coming in. It's strictly are we going to separate the trial from a simple possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, or are we going to try sentencing enhancement at the same time? Yes, Your Honor. And the reason that I'm trying to go through all of this evidence is because in order for the court to have the full picture of what would be put on and why the state believes it to be relevant is that timeline. So I'm going to go through the timeline. 
timeline of events, why this defendant is the one carrying that gun. His DNA is on the gun. That is going to be the defense, is that it's transfer DNA. The gun belongs to Antonisha Bryant, and the state is not shying away from that. There is female DNA on that gun. The state is not shying away from that. But the fact that his DNA is on that gun is important. We have to prove why it's not just transfer DNA, because all of these events leading up to this viewing where he is stopped is a motivation for him to carry a gun alongside his gang membership. All of these events. So he's shot at, and then he continues to bait the gang in these music videos that follow. And in one music video, he speaks directly to the fact that he gives money to females to buy things that he cannot buy. So it's that continued pattern, that continued timeline of the back and forth between the gang that creates the reason why this should not be bifurcated, that there is a motivation for this defendant to be the one carrying the gun and not Antonisha Bryant. I guess I'm still seeing it somewhat differently. And I'll give you an example from the evidence that's been presented. They've moved to bifurcate. I have to make a ruling on whether the gang sentence enhancement under the Florida statute, whether the facts presented by the state to prove the gang sentencing enhancement are going to be presented to the jury at the same time as the facts for possession. Based on what I've seen, some of the facts that the detective introduced could be relevant to a possession of a firearm by a convicted felon charge or could be relevant to both membership in a gang or possession of a firearm by a convicted felon charge. I don't see it as necessarily a clear either or. And, Your Honor, that's why we put on so much because I do think that the court has discretion to say this can come in and this doesn't. But I guess what I'm looking for from the state is some evidence. And you ain't got none, Swider. The motion, I mean, that's one of the things that kind of floored me this morning. The motion from the prosecution in response to my motions. I mean, that might help with the issues. You mean a written response? They don't have to make them. They don't have to file them. They don't want to file one. That's up to them. The issues I'm concerned with is 403 balancing. You know, each of these, every piece of relevant evidence is subject to 403 balancing. I don't know. Even if I deny the defense's motion to bifurcate, I assume they're still going to be objecting to each and every one of these pieces of evidence as they're brought in. And, Your Honor, that balancing test is actually referred to in his motion in Lemony No. 4 when it relates to the music videos. Right. It's also referenced in the gang enhancement. It talks about highly inflammatory and highly prejudicial. And you're right, Your Honor. That's the whole point is, you know, jack in the box up and down all day in trial, objecting to, you know, and the cases, and you've been inundated with the cases this morning, but the cases all speak to that. Even the cases that are denied bifurcation will opine the judges, like, some of this stuff is highly inflammatory. It just is. I mean, they can't even pronounce the music videos in court. I mean, I'm just saying that's the nature of this stuff. It's sex. It's violence. It's, you know, fake guns. I mean, it's terrible for a jury. And it's not a violent case. Your Honor, may I add one thing? Sure. Go ahead. My co-counsel rightfully brings up that there are plenty of enhancements out there. 775 is an enhancement that can be applied to a number of crimes. Those things don't necessarily have to be bifurcated because they are relevant to the crime charge. We have charged the gang enhancement in this case, which is what makes all of this relevant evidence. As to the prejudicial effect, I can tell you that there are 50-plus YouTube videos, and I could have gone on for days, but I specifically picked ones that fit within the timeline, that made specific references that were relevant to this case and why this defendant would need to be carrying a firearm at that viewing. As it relates to the timeline, Your Honor, that 
This is a gang war that's been going on for 10 years. And in fact, in the Henry Hayes opinion, Your Honor will see that it relates to the same back and forth. But the state has narrowed this issue to three events and three music videos and a live video that's, of course, relevant because it occurred the day of um, All right, so the basically the state's position is the gang evidence is, makes it more likely that um, the defendant was in possession of a firearm that day. Okay, but that ain't factual. All right. Um, and that the probative value is now substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. That's correct. Uh, address character evidence. Why is this not character evidence? Your Honor, uh, this is not character evidence because it goes to the gang enhancement. We are not putting... I understand, but I can easily bifurcate. Sure. And that take, and, and then if the jury finds the defendant guilty of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, then of course you have broad range to uh, establish the gang enhancement. Yes, Your Honor. And, I, and that takes care of the character evidence issue because you're no longer using character evidence to try to prove conduct in conformity with it. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I would point to the Henry case. No, man. Uh, See, I just be fighting, baby. Um, I don't be letting y'all just get away with the stuff. Court addresses the That's the difference that between California these are things that are and blood. Intertwined. This is not character evidence. This is inextricably intertwined. In order for us to prove up the gang enhancement, we have to prove that he's a gang member. Um, we're not putting this on to say, look, he's a bad person. Look. Right, but yes, you don't have to prove gang enhancement to prove he's in possession of a firearm. Yes, Your Honor, but as we've charged it, it, it is that way. And we believe so that it's relevant to why this defendant possessed that gun. There is a danger that if this doesn't come in, that the defense gets to say, look, at, he was targeted by these officers. Look how many there were. You've got the gang unit. You've got patrol. You've got the FBI out there. All because of this one person. We're not going to say that. We're not going to say that. I can tell you right now, we're not going to say that. Okay. Thank you. Um, just the only thing I'd like to respond is, you know, we've been here. The bifurcation process to me, I get this took just a, what, 45 minutes, not even an hour. So what's the burden on the state? I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really seeing this. I think what's happening here is I think the court can recognize, let them try the case on its merits, as fell in the possession of a handgun. And they, they get they get the, the guilty verdict, then we're, this gentleman bagels there for 45 minutes and he gets his gang enhancement. That's what I see. And then we're not, we're not doing this again. <laughs> That's my concern. And Your Honor, this is not a novel issue. This is, this is something that has been argued um, it's just that there's not case law in the state of Florida. At okay, well, we're talking about Florida, baby. There's plenty of case law in California, which has been provided to the court. You just, um, he just said at the beginning of this that this is gang not is not like the California issue. gang. Why That's what the officer said. Possessing this gun. Why is this not transfer DNA? Because Noel Williams tells us in a song that he can't purchase a gun, so he gives a female money to do so. He, it, I mean, he's admitting to that. No, so you're not. This female who comes in right. and says, So, for example, gun. the first part of my Glock may very well be relevant evidence to prove a felon in possession charge. Yes, Your Honor. But there's a whole lot of this other stuff that might not very well be relevant to that charge. Yes, Your Honor. It would be relevant only to the sentence enhancement. So, um, the question before the court is strictly should the sentencing enhancement be bifurcated from the felon in possession. So tell me why the sentencing enhancement is inextricably intertwined to the felon in possession charge. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I may have one moment to go to my notes. You gotta All go right, through so your the notes. The state has, as I've already said, selected these events that are directly related and close in time to one another. Um, out of this extensive game war that's been going on, uh, we talked about Malik Beals' murder, which the defendant is a victim of. He is in the car when Malik Beals is murdered. We then go to the shooting um, at the funeral, which is motivation for this defendant to need to arm himself. Um, well, that's not like self-defense. Self, which leads to the viewing. And in between all of that, we have these music videos, which are necessary to explain why this is this defendant is the possessor of the firearm and why the possession of that fi firearm is in furtherance of the gang. 
he gets shot at and it doesn't stop him from creating these videos baiting the gang that is what they do they talk the reason that the state of florida talks about who is this who is this who is this in all these music videos is because it shows that he's baiting them still even up until that that video that happens before the viewing they're still going back and forth it is the motivation for this defendant to have to arm himself in fact on the the live video green light is responding to two people that are talking and this defendant is on that video that are talking about i know where you're at and green light basically tells them to come all you hear is boom the sound of gunfire what's the mixture of dna that's on the firearm uh, it's 12 percent uh from a, there's four contributors i think three of the dna they're unknown contributors um except for mr uh, williams has 12 percent. i believe the other one is 80 percent. it's an unknown female and then um i don't have the dna report in front of me i think it's the, the last one is unknown also is that is that correct mm-hmm You'd like for me to answer? No, I, I think that's 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 the DNA contribution. It's twelve percent as far as Mr. Mr. Williams is concerned. There are three donors, yes, Your Honor. Two of them are unidentified. Obviously, um, the female donor is most likely Antonisha Bryant. She is the purchaser of the gun. The state of Florida. She wasn't tested, though. Um, we did recently get her DNA, but we just didn't see a reason to send it off. We're not shying away from the fact that she. She purchased that firearm. Um, it's her gun. It's it's the state's position that. And that's his girlfriend. Because he can't. Yeah, no, I understand. I understand straw purchases and all that stuff. I get that. I get all that. Um, I just. It's just a simple question. Whose DNA is on that? Yeah, it's the first I've heard about the DNA test. I don't know what, what, what am I going to get that. <laughs> it's not been sent off. I I only indicated that we did get her swab. We have not sent it off. But. I think that's going to be an issue. Is that Brady? You got the woman's DNA. <laughs> Jeez, I'll sit down. <laughs> that's not potentially exculpatory. Your Honor, we just got it. I'm happy to send it off. I. When did you get it? It's been about a week. Okay. It was um, at the same time this defendant was rearrested. All right. Uh, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the motion to bifurcate under advisement. I need to review the case law. Um, and just for, for benefit of counsel, um, then you got. Right now, I'm inclined to bifurcate, but that doesn't mean I'm ruling on what evidence is going to be admissible. I mean, what I what I saw here, I could easily see some of it being admissible to a felony possession charge, and some of it not be admissible for one reason or another, whether that be four or three balancing and permissible character evidence, or could be a number of well placed objections. Um, so, you know, we may have a lot of evidentiary issues to deal with at trial that there's no other way to deal with other than to deal with them as the evidence is offered and objected to. If it is, but I'll take it under advisement. I got to read this case law. Um, all right, Mr. Page, do you have everybody here? All right, sounds like we got more time. Okay, so let's move on. To. This first motion would. All right, defense first motion in Lemony seeks to bar admission of any evidence related to the Beretta handgun found in the glove compartment. What's the state's position? Your Honor, the state would be objecting. Okay, um, so the state's going to seek to introduce evidence that there was a second handgun found? Yes, Your Honor. All right, what is the uh, basis for admissibility? Um, so the, the defense cites to a case where the where an individual is charged with an auto theft and there was testimony about a toy gun from when he was arrested. That case is not applicable. Um, on the body camera footage in this case. She said one more thing that ain't applicable, but you bring it in. It tells officers that she has a gun in the car. Um, she mentions one gun. 
the officers then open the glove box and look inside and see two guns. So they go and they ask her about the two guns. She says that she has a Glock and a Beretta. At the time, the officer was mistaken as to what he saw as to the brand of gun. So he says, what about the Smith and Wesson? At that point, this defendant leans over to her and says, babe, you got a Smith and Wesson too. So she says to them, oh, that's mine. Later, Rashad Murphy arrives on scene and he takes claim to the Beretta in the car. He is, in fact, the purchaser of that firearm. So the sequence of events shows that Anthony Jabrion is actually unsure of what guns are actually in her car. So again, this is something that goes to why this defendant is the one that was possessing that gun and not Anthony Jabrion. Oh my God, this is some weak evidence. And it's obviously not favorable to the defendant that there's two guns in the car, but the state is not arguing that he's in possession of the Beretta. He's not a contributor to that DNA. But it does go to Bryant's credibility and why the jury can call her credibility into question because she does not know what guns are in the car. And this defendant, in fact, leans over to tell her what gun she owns. No. Give me an idea of how the state's planning on introducing this evidence at trial. The body camera footage would be played. Okay. And then that body camera footage is going to lay out the dialogue you just mentioned. Yes, Your Honor. And there's a chance that I'll be calling Anthony Jabrion in trial. All right. And Rashad Murphy. Sorry. I hate to interrupt. And then if you call her at trial, you would ask her something along the lines of, isn't it true that you didn't know how many guns were in your car? Sure. All right. Mr. Eckhart? Yeah, I think it's just, it's an uncharged, it's an uncharged gun. We have the charge of the gun. We have the Glock that's been charged, obviously. Then there's this other uncharged gun that was legally owned by somebody. The person that showed up, it was Rashad Murphy. It was his gun. They scrubbed it for DNA. I think they printed it. No DNA. Nobody's prints comes on it. And so now we've got another, another issue for the jury to resolve. It's like, now there's a second gun. And I don't know if that can be cured with instructions from the court. It's just a collateral issue. It's not charged. There's no evidence that he touched the gun or had possession of the gun. Detective Daigle didn't have any information. I think the state's position, if I understand it correctly, is that their allegation is that Mr. Williams is the actual owner of the Glock firearm. And that the fact that the person who, what's the young lady's last name? Antonisha Bryant. Bryant. And it was Bryant, the purchaser of the Glock? Of the Glock, yes. Right. So the state's position is that the purchaser of the Glock isn't really the owner of the Glock. And that the fact that she doesn't have a gun in her car shows that it's not her gun. As to the body cam footage. She might not know the name of the gun. Is it the defense's position that it's all irrelevant? Or that certain parts of it should be redacted? What's the defense's position there? No, I was just specifically about the gun. The second gun is taken out of the glove box by Officer Pepper, along with the first gun. I guess the first, I'm trying to think what's the sequence is which gun came out of the glove box first. Whether the Glock came out or the Beretta came out first. I don't know off the top of my head. But my danger would be just the jury would be confused because now you've got two guns in the case. One has been charged. So I guess it'd have to be some sort of instruction. All right. So I'm going to deny the defendant's first motion in limine as stated. That denial is without prejudice to raise objections. I think the defense position that is addressed somewhat in the motion in limine that there's limitations on what the state can do regarding that Beretta firearm because Mr. Williams is not charged with possessing it is well placed. I wish I could give you all more clear and more definite rulings on this stuff. But unfortunately, I don't think we can do that until trial comes along and we address it as it goes. Thank you. 
But for example, Mr. Eckert, so it can kind of guide you through trial is I do think it would most likely be admissible to elicit evidence that Ms. Bryant, her lack of knowledge as to how many firearms were in her car or what kind could be relevant, could be relevant to establish that Mr. Williams was the act was the true possessor or owner. No, she just don't know names of guns. Just at the same time, there's going to be limits on that. Well, just to clarify, I think when she's watched those videos several times, I think when she's confronted by Pepper, she does say I have a clock and a brother. And then he says, what about that might actually help your case? I think it will. Right. So I mean, it may very well help you. All right. So what I've said, I've just granted that without prejudice to defendants right to renew the objection at trial. That's the best I can really do with it at this time. I'm going to give you all as much during these hearings. I'm going to give you all as much guidance as I can to hopefully narrow the trial issues. I understand that from an evidentiary standpoint, this is likely to be a difficult trial and we will deal with any of these issues as we need to and spend as much time on them as we need to. All right, let's go to the second motion in limine. And it looks like you're objecting to introduction of specific statement in the police report. Is that right, Mr. Eckhart? Just the statement from Officer Peppers. I think it's throughout the police report and just to try to minimize any prejudice at trial. He's familiar with Mr. Williams. He knows who Mr. Williams is. I don't know that he's ever arrested Williams, but there's case law that shows that when a jury sees that, they come to the conclusion he's guilty because the cops know who he is. Sure. Let me hear from the state. So, Your Honor, this is kind of dependent upon what the court does as it relates to the bifurcation issue. But I would like to point out that Officer Peppers actually mistaken this defendant for Dasan Williams. He doesn't know that it's Noah Williams, but that is neither here nor there. Then what you keep bringing up? Well, he's got a mask on. So, and Officer Peppers is not a gang detective. He doesn't, he knows these people just loosely. But this motion, I think, has to be decided once Your Honor decides whether or not this additional evidence comes in as it relates to the gang enhancement. I'm not sure that's true because Peppers, you know, we can have, if it's the gang information, that's fine. But Officer Peppers doesn't have to go that extra step and say, I know who he is from the neighborhood. Sure. I'm not going to ask him that. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to mess with the motion. Let me just protect that from happening. Right. So, I guess I want to make sure that the state understands what I'm saying about the motion to bifurcate. The motion to bifurcate doesn't solve all the gang evidence one way or the other, no matter how I rule, whether I grant it, whether I deny it. It doesn't, that, I see those as different issues. Well, let me be more clear. If I deny it, then obviously all the gang, not all the gang evidence, but the evidence that's deemed relevant as it's introduced to trial would come in. If I grant the motion to bifurcate, that doesn't mean that the state can't say the word gang. But we'll just have to deal with it as we do. Let's see. If I understand the motion, I'm trying to get at it. Mr. Eckert, your motion is directed at a statement in the police report. Is that right? Right. In this police report, one of the things that Coppers represents this police report is that upon coming to the scene, he sees my client with his shirt pulled up and then he makes the assumption, which is the ultimate fact in the case, ultimate issue. I knew that he had a gun in his pants or something to that effect, as opposed to, it looked like it was an object. I want to make, we're on the second motion to limit. I guess it's the third one. The second one was the one we just talked about. The second motion to limit is that the statement is it should be noted that subject Williams was personally known to all officers at the scene as a gang member who is also a convicted felon. Yeah, that was the second one we just talked. That was the one that talked about as far as Officer Coppers knowing him during his police work. Right. He knew who Williams was. Yes. 
if it helps the court, I do not intend to ask Officer Peppers. Are you intending to introduce the police report into evidence? No, Your Honor. Okay. So I'm going to grant the defendant's motion in limine as it pertains to the statement in the police report. You're getting a lot of blood. I hope you look at this as grace and y'all stop doing all that foolishness. It's Officer Peppers, correct? Yes, Your Honor. They're wasting their tax care money for this foolishness. All right, let's go to the third motion in limine. And that's the one I just spoke about earlier, that there's a statement from Officer Peppers that it appeared to him that when he engaged, I guess, my client at the driver's seat, that he saw my client's shirt pulled up and his pants were in disarray. And Peppers comes to the conclusion, in my training experience, he pulled a gun, a firearm out of his pants, which is the ultimate issue in the fact. The jury heard that. They're going to, you know, police officer says that he pulled a gun out of his pants, even though he didn't see it, as opposed to saying, looks like he may have pulled an object out of his pants. I mean, that's what this motion is about. I just want to try to mitigate that so it doesn't get in front of the jury, because once it spells wrong, it spells wrong. All right, let me hear from the state. Your Honor, the motion actually calls this general behavior of certain kinds of offenders. I think it's important to talk about what Officer Peppers actually testified to, was that as a firearm carrier, as well as in his police experience, he has carried his gun in his waistband. And that is what made him think that there was a gun pulled from his waistband. That's not a criminal behavior in itself to have a gun in your waistband. Really, what you want to use it for. What he visually saw, and what he actually communicates to another officer on body camera, is that it appears that his shirt is pulled up as though he had pulled a firearm from his waistband. It is just an observation he made as a person that carries a firearm. No, but you don't get it. We don't want your observation, we want facts. Or this is what criminals do. This is what people who carry their firearms. You're initiating that criminals do that by you saying that. Throw it out. I'm going to deny the motion in limine subject to the state laying an adequate foundation at trial. Mr. Edgar, you can make foundation based objections at trial. Certainly, you can make plenty of arguments as to weight as well. All right. Fourth motion in limine. All right. So if I understand the objection correctly, Mr. Eckhart, this is an objection to any evidence regarding rap videos. Is that right? Right. And just so you understand, I didn't know which videos the prosecution was going to play until whenever, I guess it was a week or so ago. So this motion was filed before that. But the motion, you know, we've been here a long time and you have the cases in front of you, but you'll see that, you know, several courts have just found that the violent nature, the profanity, that it's highly prejudicial to, you know, the defendant when they're playing and they're not redacted. That's the basis. And of course, there was a First Amendment issue. And also the fact that, as we said before in an earlier hearing, he is an artist. 
like it or not, he makes uh, money doing this. He's got a following throughout the world, and sometimes, a lot of times, what he says isn't necessarily true. So there's that that part of it too. So that's the danger is that people are going to see this and see him dancing around with play guns and making these statements and feel that that's that's reality. So that's where we're at. With that. All right. Um, I don't think I can rule on it at this time. Is the problem? I agree. Uh, so I'm going to deny it, <laughs> subject to defendant's ability to raise the objection to trial. All right, and then um, now the state had filed a motion to revoke the bond, but it looks like Judge Sachs had already revoked the bond. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I was unaware of that. Looks like uh, Judge Sachs revoked it at first appearance. Is that your understanding, Mr. Ecker? Look to the docket. I didn't see that, but I have trouble. Uh, yeah, so it, it, I mean, sure, I've got the docket in front of me here. It was, um, it's from the clerk. Bond was revoked orally in open court by Judge Sachs. Okay. That would have been at first appearance. Um, he set new bond at none. So I'm going to deny the state's motion to revoke bond as moot. case in this division as well? It will be, yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to guess that's not the last we've heard about the bond. Well, no, I, I, it's always not. <laughs> but we'll deal with that um, in due course. I'm going to review this case law. I'll get a, a ruling out, on you, out to you all on the motion to bifurcate promptly. Um, I understand the importance of that to both the state and the defense as you move forward in these matters um, and uh, everybody think they're going to be ready for trial on the third? DNA evidence would be kind of important I think to have constitutionally. I think that's an issue. All right. May I just address that? Sure. I'm not sure how Antonisha's, Antonisha Bryant's DNA being on the firearm or not on the firearm is some sort of Brady or exculpatory evidence. Um, prior to me having her swap, the defense never asked for that to be done. Um, I, I did it just because she was at the traffic stop. We had gotten a search warrant. I was trying to think through how I was going to present this case. I'm happy to send it off. I can't tell this court how long that's going to take for it to be tested. And again, the state isn't claiming that this gun was not purchased by Antonisha Bryant. We're going to tell the jury we expect that right. that large amount of DNA to be to belong to her. And if, if we stipulate to it, that'd be great. And you're willing to stipulate to it? Stipulate to that. Is that my expert? It's important to my DNA expert, Ohio, I'll tell you that much. I can't stipulate to something that I don't know to be fact. And I guess my argument would be, Judge, uh, once the government takes that step and collects that evidence, I think they've got an obligation. Your Honor, I'm happy to send it off, but I, I can't guarantee it'll be done by October 3rd. I understand. Um, so we got to go out. Mr. Williams has to decide how he wants to deal with that. I mean, in, in fairness, I can understand the defense's point that if it's an 80% mixture, or if 80% of the DNA, I may be messing my figures up, is a female, and his defense is that 
the gun really is hers, that would seem pretty relevant to the defense. But, Your Honor, we're saying the same thing. The state's going to say that. Okay. But we're missing a step on the transfer DNA, as you know. Right. Girlfriend. I mean, and to be clear, to be clear, I mean, the state decides how it proves its case. They're not under any affirmative obligation to swap anybody. They can't disclose evidence they don't have. Right now, all they've got is a swab and a kit. Right. It's, anyway. Is the state going to send it? Your Honor, I'm happy to send it off. But, again, that is with the understanding that there is a chance that it's not coming back October 3rd. Yeah, I would expect it probably wouldn't be, but I don't know. I just would, I don't know where this case is going, but I always look at big picture. I don't want to do this again. You don't want to do this again. I think once the state collects the evidence, I think that in a case like this where you have DNA experts and it's trace DNA, I personally, I would be sending it off if I had that job again. That's just what I'm, I'll leave it at that. Well, that's for counsel to work out. That's not for the court to work out. Anything else? Not from the state. Oh, let's see. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Let's come back on the 19th just to check in. If I haven't issued my ruling, that will give you all an opportunity to yell at me for that. And the bond hearing, is it, that's going to be before this court? Do I have to file a motion for the bond? Yeah, that would be before this court. Okay. And then I'll advise the court as far as the DNA experts availability. She may have been calling me while we were in court. Yeah. If there's a, let me ask counsel a question. Would it make more sense to come back on, come back next week? Your Honor, I'm not going to be available next week. Okay. 19th is fine with me. I've already got it. Let's come back on the 19th. If there's, Mr. Eckhart, if there's a problem with your expert, let the state and my assistant know. And then maybe we can get on a call and figure out what the appropriate next step is. If it's possible to do that, I'd like to get the case tried as scheduled. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.